but something happened yesterday that is, I don't know if surprising is the right word or just dumbfound. I mean, it was, it's, it's preposterous and you might know what I'm alluding to already. What I am alluding to is the firing of Jace Tingler by the San Diego Padres. Now I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a bold statement here that, um, could certainly be proven wrong, right? I run the risk when I make these bold predictions um, of being very wrong, but that's sort of my job. And so the Padres are finished. The Padres are done, right? And that sounds extremely bold because of how much potential they have, right? Um, but the Padres are done. And it's not just because they fired Jace Tingler, although this is the nail in the coffin for me. I mean, this is maybe the worst decision of of a managerial um amplitude that's a word right i'm pretty sure that's a word i don't think it's the right word but it sounds cool so i'm gonna use it of the managerial uh, amplitude that i've ever seen which like maybe recency bias but like it's it's pretty bad and i'll tell you why so they hire so quick hot right it's not even like they fired him and then they do you know a big search right and, you know, there's guys like Ron Washington um, who, who have been in conversation and Bruce Bochy who may or may not be, you know, looking to come back into managing. But they hire Bob Melvin right away, right? So that would indicate to me that they were um, seeking out Bob Melvin, formerly of the Oakland A's, and that played into their uh, decision to fire Jace Tingler knowing that he was the next guy. Maybe they were even in conversation before. Okay. Jace Tingler, two seasons with the Padres, and he's out. So if you've seen my show before, there is a pretty good chance that you know how much I like Jace Tingler. I think, honestly, I could probably say that over his last two years, which are his first two years as a manager, he was a rookie manager last year in 2020, um, and I can honestly say that he's probably the best manager in Major League Baseball in my eyes. Um, he is absurdly aggressive. And I mean aggress aggressive from an old school standpoint of, of moving guys around, um, making things happen, putting pressure on defenses, um, riding starters pretty deep into, into the game, getting a lot, of, you know, a lot out of the starting pitching. And very, I mean, and, and look, we've seen over the last two years, and a lot of people give a lot of credit to like guys like Tatis and, and Machado and some of the leaders and Hosmer and for creating such a good culture in San Diego, which certainly is, is undeniable. I mean, one of the best cultures and just energies um, in the league. And no one gives credit to Jace Tingler for that, except for, I guess, me. So he checks every box for me, right? The things that I look for in a manager, right? Getting your team playing with energy, with, with, with passion and, and playing well. Um, of course, in-game decision-making and, and also just creating that broad picture sort of organizational culture. And he checks every box for me. Um, I was going to do a managerial sort of uh, ranking some, some, you know, sort of hierarchy or list or something like that. You know, I was thinking of doing that pretty soon, probably after the World Series. And I, I, if I were to guess, he would, you know, I haven't done my analysis, but he'd probably be number one. And now he's out of a job, which is, it's just absolutely preposterous to me. And whatever team lands him, which I, I hope very, very much that he, um, that somebody does. I think is getting a phenomenal asset. And I mean, it's the elephant in the room, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to deny it. He was fired because he's not an analytics guy. And, you know, he, like every other manager says that he's on board. Right. But it was very clear that he wasn't. And I think in large part, that was a factor in their success in 2020 and they had a down year this year. And for some reason, the San Diego, um, you know, front office felt like he was 
a culprit there. And, you know, what's interesting is that they fired Andy Green to hire him, who I was a big fan of, right? And when they fired Andy Green, I was I was a little skeptical. But right away, when I started to, to look at Jace Tingler and, and what he would be able to do as a manager, and obviously there's not a big track record there, he had never managed before, but there was just something about him, you know, what I heard in, in interviews and stuff, and I can pull up, you know, I'll, I'll try to like maybe link my my first ever impression, right? I, I, I remember the clip that I did when uh, when they hired him. And I remember like being very surprisingly um, impressed with him, right, for how little I knew about him. And that just grew over time. And, and he's really impressed me over the last two years. And what's it's very unfortunate, I think, um, to see him on his way out of San Diego, because what he was building there was incredible. And I mean, you can't I mean, in the down year and, and we talked about this the other day, right? Even even baseball, even front offices, right, run the fall into the trap of comparing and analyzing managers based on um, expected wins versus actual wins, right? And there's so many other factors that go into it. It's so easy to blame the manager, but um, what he was building in San Diego, I mean, he deserves so much credit for that. Um, I can't think honestly off the top of my head where he could fit next. But, you know, I'll definitely give that some more thought. And I certainly think whoever gets him, hopefully somebody does, um, is getting a real asset um, in the dugout. And, and you know, I don't want to – I don't want to bang on Bob Melvin, right? But, you know, to add insult to injury, Bob Melvin is um, the – opposite of what I would be looking for if I am a San Francisco uh, or excuse me, San Diego front office member, right? Number one, he's extremely analytical. This is a very, um, very intangibly driven team with a lot of really strong leaders like a Hosmer and a Tatis, who's an emerging leader, but he's beyond emerging at this point. I mean, he's, a, he's just a full blown franchise player, both on and off the field. And, um, you know, Bob Melvin, he's, he's over the course of his career, he has become increasingly analytical. He has been his amount of offensive, um, aggressiveness, you know, like I talked about it before and, and creativity is probably the better word for it has declined over the course of his career at a pretty linear rate. And, um, you know, certainly that's what these guys are looking for is, is guys that um, aren't going to screw it up, so to speak. You know, obviously I say that with, you know, a little bit facetiously because I think it's quite the opposite. And, and I think I certainly favor Tingler's style over Bob Melvin. But he, you know, I mean, he's not had um, a particularly successful career either. I mean, to be quite frank, he has a 514 winning percentage. Um, you know, he's not very good in the postseason. Um, and that's that's quite an understatement. He's has a 370 winning percentage in the postseason. If you want to look at that, his winning percentage in Oakland in the postseason was 350. Um so and the, I mean the Padres won a playoff series um last year against a top five, probably top three actually probably top two franchise in uh, in Major League Baseball in the St. Louis Cardinals with a rookie manager and a extremely young and inexperienced team. They won a playoff series. Um, so it's, it's, it's absolutely mind-boggling to me, honestly, that, that Tingler was fired after two seasons, two seasons of which I thought he had some of the best managing I've ever seen. And, you know, again, to make it all worse, I think Bob Melvin is not at all the right man for this job. And I don't mean any disrespect there, but I just couldn't really believe it, honestly, when I saw that Tingler was fired. I mean, and it wasn't so much that I couldn't believe it in the moment because, you know, it had been sort of sort of approaching and lingering and I had heard some rumors and stuff. So I was kind of prepared for it, but it's this marks the end for San Diego. And I know that sounds extreme because they're very much just 
scratching the surface of what they can do. But we saw this year there was just something about them that wasn't clicking. Um, and it's and it's and the 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 real reason why I think this is the end for them, besides that whole spiel, is I can very clearly see now, you know, Tatis obviously signing the huge extension. I would be not at all surprised if he ends up traded over the next couple of years. Um, because to be, you know, I, I'm going to be definitive about it. I don't think Bob Melvin is going to work. I think they're going to see a huge drop off in performance from Tingler to Melvin. And I think this team is just going to get older. They are not going to win enough games in that division. And Bob Melvin's going to be on his way out pretty soon. I uh, certainly, if Tingler wasn't, wasn't getting the job done, um, after winning a playoff series, the Padres are right now the third best team in that division, and I think they're going to get even worse now. So Melvin should be on his way out soon. It'll be uh, another manager for for Tatis, and I can definitely see if they start to decline, which obviously I'm expecting they will, that he will, will ask to be traded. I can kind of just envision that in my head right now. And so as these guys get older, the leaders sort of graduate and, and Hosmer ends up um, – ends up leaving and, and Machado's, you know, getting up there and, um, and Tatis, you know, kind of enters his prime, you know, maybe he'll stay loyal to San Diego, but I can totally see a scenario in which they're struggling. They're the third best team in the division. Um, and they're just not able to compete and Tatis will, will ask, um, to be traded. So, I mean, I can just—I could go on about this for hours. I mean, it's there's so many reasons why, um, why Tingler was why the Tingler firing is 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 a terrible move by the Padres, and you know, it's it's a little bit, you know, it goes past the point of just a bad move, right? It it, it bothers me a little bit because I think that he deserves the utmost credit among managers in major league baseball. And he's gotten the opposite and he's now without a job. So I hope someone picks him up. Whoever does will deserve a lot of credit and will be rewarded for that. I think, and Bob Melvin comes in, we'll see. I don't think he's certainly, as you can tell, I don't think he is as good of a manager as Jace Tingler. And I don't think he's as good as Andy green either, who, um, who Jace Tingler succeeded. So um, I think the Padres culturally, you know, took a hit this year, especially with the Giants returning to form like they did. And I think this is going to fall off the wheels in San Diego after this firing. I can definitely um, see a, a, a potential um, – sort of disturbance in the locker room, I, I would assume, you know, uh, unless there's something I'm missing, that Jace Tingler was was very well respected in the organization um, amongst those young players. And, you know, again, Bob Melvin just not the right fit for that, for that environment and for that, for that room. And um, there are a lot of things going on right now in San Diego that if I was a Padres fan, I would be a little concerned about. Thank you for watching that clip from Small Ball. If you enjoyed it, which I'm assuming you did because I don't see why you wouldn't have, it might behoove you to check out some other segments or full shows that we have here on the channel, all of which can be found directly below this video by clicking on the icon or Small Ball tag. And again, I would highly recommend it because, you know, Small Ball. So again, thank you for watching. Have a good one. Peace.